Hello, let's talk about how to organize an open-ended choose-your-own-adventure story. Um, so way back in week six, before you knew very much, um, the way that we would have organized it is something like this. We've got uh, a scanner for reading in system input, um, and we display the first part in the story. You're in a dark hallway. You can go east, or you can look, and then we get the user choice. And then we've got some if statements that test their choice. So if they choose to go east, then like we go down one story branch, which is here. Otherwise, if they'd chosen look, then we go down another story branch. And the problem here is, like we'd have to do this all over again, but like nested inside each of the story choices. So now when we go east, it's like, you see a dog. You can like whatever or whatever. And then you read it in again, and now you have to have two more if else statements. So if something is true, otherwise, so uh, if they chose one thing, do something, otherwise choose something else. So you're gonna end up with this like crazy structure where you have if statements inside if statements inside if statements for as many choices deep as your story goes. Um, so that's like kind of a mess and not a very good way of organizing. So let's talk about a better way. A nice way of organizing the story tree is as an actual tree of objects. So let's imagine we create a new object called a story point. Um, if you're reading like a choose your own adventure book, this might represent a single page in the book. So the idea is a story point object will have the story text for that particular part of the story. It will have choices text, which is what you actually display to the user when you are telling them what choices they have. Um, but then the important part of the object is it's got a list of the specific things the user might type in order to make their choice. So for our previous example, that was like look or go east. Those are the two things they might type. And then it's got another list of other story point objects, which this one is connected to. And so uh, the way that that's going to work is you could have like an array list or an array of the actual things they type, so here it would be look and go east. And then, in the same order, you would have the actual objects that you would want to go to next if they typed each of those things. So if they type look, then I'd want to go to a different story point, which I've labeled C, and is stored in the list here. So in other words, every single story point not only knows it's part of the story, but it also knows which other parts of the story it's connected to. So in terms of actual code for the main part of the game, um, at the very beginning, you'd want a method that creates all of the story points and makes sure they're all hooked up to each other so that each one knows which other ones it's connected to. Um, and then we need some variable that is pointing to the starting place or the current, or the current place in our story. So I've got a story point data type. The variable name is called current. And I'm assuming start is maybe a story point that always... It's a variable that always points to the starting place. And what I'm saying is, let's assign that start variable to current, so that current also points at the starting story point. And now I have this loop where, as long as the game isn't over, I'll display... I'll, I'll ask the current story point to display its part of the story. Then I'll ask the current story point to display the choices that the user might have. Then I'll actually have some code that gets the user input, so they'll type whatever they're going to type. And then we ask the current story point to look up what the next choice... Uh, sorry, look up what the next story point would be for that user choice. So user choice is the text that they typed, and you give that as an input. And then this is supposed to return whichever the next story point object is that we would want to go to. And I'm saving that into a variable called next. And then, assuming that it actually exists, um, we would assign next to current. So what that means is that if we're here, A is going to display its part of the story. A will display the choices to the user. Then the user will type something like look. Then we'll ask A to give us the next story point for the string look, which is the choice that the user chose, and A is going to give back the C object, which, it's, which it has stored in its own list over here. So when it gives back the C object, the C object gets saved into next, and then we'll take current and we'll assign current to be that next C object. So now instead of pointing there, current is pointing here. And then we start the loop over again from the top, and now when we ask current to display its story, current is pointing at a different object. So current is pointing at this part of the story. 
so it will display its part of the story and its user choices and we'll let the user choose and then if they chose a particular direction we'll update current again so that's how you can have your variable move through all of the different story points that are all connected together and if you wanted to it doesn't have to be shaped like a tree every story point could be connected to any other story point so you could have a story point that loops back to itself you could have a story point that takes you to a previous point in the story or to a whole other branch in the story so that's very flexible so I would say two next steps would be to uh, type out this kind of template for how your main game is gonna work you want to try and get this working with just two story point objects uh, but before you can do that you have to think out like what are the variables that a story point needs and what are the methods that it needs? So we've already talked about a couple of variables. You want the text for its story and the text that it'll display, display to the user when it's time to choose. And you'll want some array lists for uh, what are the actual keywords and which are the actual other story points. Um, you'll probably want getters and setters. Um, and in particular, like you wouldn't want to set the whole list, but each story point you need a way of telling it to add a new choice and a new connecting room. Um, so inside create all story points, um, let's say we have a new story point. And let's say there's nothing in the constructor. You, you could say like story point dot set text and then say like once upon a time or whatever, like whatever your story is going to be. And then you could have story point dot set display options and then like type go to blah 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 and that's what would display to the user when it comes time to choose but then we'd want to be able to say like something like this um, like add choice and we'd want to give it a word like look and then we'd want to give it another story point object here so let's make another story point object which we'll call uh, story point one new story point and then story point one set text you've looked you see a dragon etc so now when I want to connect the first story point to the second story point you'd have an add choice method where you can tell the first story point when they type look I want it to be connected to this other story point object story point one so that's the idea. You'll create all of your story points, you'll give them all of their text, and then as a second step, you'll sort of say to each one how it's hooked up to the other ones. Um, and so you'll have to think about kind of how will these methods work. Okay, good luck.